Suppose L is a language. Is there a finite automaton that recognizes L? And if not, which languages can be recognized by a finite automaton? Kleiner's theorem gives us the answer. A language is regular if and only if there is a finite automaton that recognizes the languages. Now, the elements of a regular language are constructed by concatenation, union, and star closure. Let's see if we can construct a finite automaton that recognizes these individually. Or, since every NFA lambda is equivalent to a finite automaton, we can look for NFA lambdas instead. To give us something to work on, let's start with star closure. Let's prove that if L is a regular language defined by star closure, then there is an NFA lambda recognizing L. So concrete never hurts. Suppose we want to construct an NFA lambda that recognizes 110 star. We can construct it as shown, where we have a bunch of transition rules that will take us to an accepting state, at which point a lambda transition could take us back to the start. And we can generalize this for the star closure of any language, provided it's the star closure of a single element. But we'd also need to show that the star closure of a set of two elements, like has an NFA lambda, and likewise the star closure of a set of three elements, and the star closure of a set of four elements. And this gives us an infinite ordered list of statements to prove, so let's prove it by induction. We've already proven the base step. Now suppose there's an NFA lambda for the star closure of a set of k elements for all strings x, i. Now suppose x, k plus 1 is a string that also leads to our accepting state. Then there's a set of transitions following x, k. Then there's an NFA lambda that also accepts this one larger set. And this proves our induction step. And so, if L is a language generated by a star closure, then there's an NFA lambda that accepts L, and so there's a finite automaton that also accepts L. How about concatenation? Suppose L1 and L2 are regular languages, then L1, L2 is also regular, and if M1 is an NFA lambda that accepts L, and M2 is an NFA lambda that accepts L2, then it seems like we should be able to chain them to produce an NFA lambda that accepts the concatenation. Diagrammatically, suppose we have some NFA lambda that accepts L1 and some other NFA lambda that accepts L2. We'll assume, relabeling as necessary, that our set of states is disjoint and we can use a lambda transition to go from the accepting state of the first to the initial state of the second. And this gives us a NFA lambda. Now note, the only way to get to an accepting state is to start with some string in L1 that's accepted by the first part, perform a lambda transition to Q0 prime, and then continue with some string in L2 that's accepted by the second part. So if we have a string in each language, their concatenation is going to be in the concatenated language, and the string will be accepted by our NFA lambda. What about unions? So if we have a finite automaton that accepts L1 and another that accepts L2, we can use a lambda transition from a starting point to the starting points of each. And so we can construct an NFA lambda to recognize a language like this. So a useful idea to remember, the last shall be first. Since this is the star closure of a union, we want an NFA lambda that evaluates a star closure. And this is one that loops back to its starting point using a lambda transition. Next, we want two NFA lambdas that recognize the components of the union with a lambda transition leading to the starting state of each.
And it's worth contrasting this to the NFA Lambda recognizing this, which is a union of star closures. So since this is a union, we want a lambda transition to one of two NFA lambdas. The first language is one star, so a one takes us to an accepting state, and then we can use a lambda transition back to the starting point. Likewise, our second language is one zero star, so we can represent it again by getting to our accepting state and then using a lambda transition back to the starting point.